Praise God, praise God. As you're standing, if you want to grab your Bibles, amen, in honor of the Word of God this morning. Amen. How privileged we are to be in His presence. Amen. You're not worthy. It's by His grace. Amen. Oh, He loves you. And His grace is reaching for you. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter how good you are, how bad you are, or how good you think you are, or how bad you think you are. It's His grace. I said it's His grace. Amen. It's His grace. Second Timothy chapter four. If I missed anybody in giving you honor, please forgive me. But I honor all the leaders here at POS. Amen. I want to greet you from Life Point Church. If they're watching, I know some of them are our church members back in Samoa. Amen. Love y'all. Hope you had great service today. Verse 7, it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. We all have a course. We all have a race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me, verse 8, a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. I'm thankful that the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter, Timothy that it's not for me only but unto all them also that love his appearing I, I'm looking towards that day is there anybody else that is looking that loves the appearing the second coming of Jesus Christ could you place your Bibles down could you lift your voice one more time could you please pray for me I'll pray for you God, I pray for this apostolic group of men and women of God. I pray, God, that you would bless them this morning. I pray, Lord, that the Word of God would penetrate their hearts. And when they leave this service, they would be encouraged. Let them leave revived with hope. I pray, God, that your Word go forth and not return void. God, anoint my mind, Lord Jesus. Anoint my lips, oh God. Loose my tongue today to preach with love, to preach with conviction, to preach with passion. In the name of Jesus, have your way in this place. Touch lives, touch hearts. We need you today. We can't do it without you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So be it. God bless you. You may be seated. Murphy's Medal of Honor was awarded when he was just 19 years old for his actions at the Colmer Pocket in December of 1945. Murphy and his unit, they were ordered to hold against a German counterattack in the area. And after the Germans hit their M10 tanker destroyer, causing it to burst into flames, Murphy ordered his troops to fall back. Alone, he covered their retreat and held off the Germans by mounting the burning tank's 50 caliber machine gun and calling in artillery strikes. His position was attacked on three sides by six tanks and waves of infantry. Wounded and out of ammunition, he returned to his company, refused medical treatment, and organized a successful counterattack. William D. Hawkins and his platoon of 40 men, they were pinned down by a number of pyramid-shaped steel machine gun nests that were firing heavy machine gun rounds as they advanced on Batillo Island. Already wounded by shrapnel during his landing, Hawkins single-handedly took out six of the machine guns by crawling up to them and shooting the Japanese soldiers inside point blank. And when he ran out of ammunition, he threw grenades and satchel charges. After destroying a seventh machine gun nest, he was unfortunately wounded in the chest and a medic patched him up and 
His superior told him to get on the first aid boat and leave. He responded by yelling, I'm not doing it, sir. I come here to kill Japs, not go home, end quote. Technician fifth grade Maxwell and three other soldiers armed only with a 45 caliber automatic pistol defended the battalion observation post against an overwhelming onslaught by enemy infantrymen at platoon strength. Despite a hail of fire from automatic weapons and grenade launchers, technician 5th grade Maxwell aggressively fought off the advancing enemy elements and by his calmness and his tenacity and his fortitude inspired his fellow comrades to continue the unequal struggle. And when an enemy hand grenade, the uh, writing says, was thrown into the midst of his squad, Maxwell unhesitatingly hurled himself upon the grenade and by his unprotected body absorbed the full force of the explosion. And this act of instantaneous heroism permanently maimed technician fifth grade Maxwell, but it saved the lives of his comrades in arms. These three men are just a few of the 3,517 Medal of Honor soldiers who valiantly displayed courage and heroism while engaging in action against an enemy of the United States of America. I'm not too familiar with the military here in Australia, but I assume you have some type of medal that is given for acts of heroism. I would say that these men, including your military men, have put up a good fight. These men and many more, they will forever be remembered not for their name, not for their status in society, but simply because they knew how to put up a good fight. They counted the cost. They understood the need. It far outweighed the cost of danger, the possibility of severe wounds and even death. So it does go without saying this morning, these men, they really did put up a good fight. They really knew how to fight when it was time for them to fight. Although many of them came face to face with debilitating fear, they were face to face with the unknown as they approached that enemy line, still they moved forward. They did not waver, they did not get distracted to the left, to the right, they did not cower in fear, but they moved forward knowing that their moving forward was going to affect the overall outcome of of the war. And when I think of heroes, and I think of those that are courageous and those that have strength and fortitude, of course, I'm a uh, 30, almost 35 years in Pentecost now, so I was raised under a pew, if you will. I think about the moments I was in Sunday school when I think about heroes, I think about all the Bible stories that were told to me by my Sunday school teachers. I love Sunday school teachers. God bless all of our Sunday school teachers. Amen. I think about all the stories that were told to me. David and Goliath, it's an all-time favorite. Daniel in the lion's den. Samson and Delilah. Jonah in the whale. Or Jonah in the big fish. Doesn't say it was a whale. Joseph in his coat of many colors, Moses and the Pharaoh, Joshua, the walls of Jericho, Noah in the ark. So many great fighters of faith. And I thought about this heroic bestowing of the Congressional Medal of Honor. And if that medal was around during biblical times, I would have to say, that the majority of the Old Testament heroes of the faith and the New Testament heroes of the faith, the apostles of Jesus Christ, the disciples of Jesus Christ, 
they would have been given this honor. No, they would have that medal pinned on their lapel. But there is one man that stands out from the crowd. In my mind, he is the cream that rose to the top. I would have to non-arbitrarily pick the Apostle Paul. The Bible records just a snippet, just a capstone of his life in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. If you would, let me read that this morning. It says, I have worked much harder. This is his letter to the church of Corinth. Been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received 40 lashes minus one. He says things a bit complicated, but that's how the Apostle Paul wrote his letters. Basically, 39. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, in danger from false brothers. What is this guy doing? He's walking with the Lord. I have labored and toiled and often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Being a Christian isn't about walking through fields of daisies. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be hardships. There's going to be trials. The life of Paul could be summarized in this passage of alone. He was a fighter. Amen. The Apostle Paul understood what it meant to fight through it all. Fight through the good times, the bad times, the ugly times. There was a fight within the Apostle Paul that could not be quenched. There was a made up mind. There was a determination that could not be extinguished. There was something within the Apostle Paul that was alive and well Something real that was pushing him, that was persuading him past the status of quitting when the going gets tough. Do we have any apostolics here today that has a made up mind? I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. What about our young people? Do you have a made up mind, young apostolic man, young apostolic lady? I'm not going to quit. What about the moms and the dads? What about the elders? Amen. We're not going to quit. We're not going to throw in the towel. We've got something worth fighting for. I believe we can learn from the Apostle Paul. I believe we can learn from the many great men and women of God that would not stop fighting. And I believe us who are in Pentecost, us Christians that are walking with the Lord, if we're not willing to fight for this, you're not going to make it. They won't be around very long, those that are not willing to fight for this life. If you don't see the value in this life and the purpose of why we fight. When discouragement comes, see you later. It's not worth it. When hard times come, when temptation comes, knock of your heart. If you don't see the value in the gospel. If you don't see the value of putting one foot in front of the other. If you don't see the value in coming to church on Sunday mornings, in lifting your hands, when you know you've got stuff going on at home, when you're going through a trial in a hardship. What about when your expectations haven't been met? What about?
about if God hasn't healed your body like you think he should or when he should? What if the church isn't growing fast enough? What if family and friends let you down? It's in those moments that you have to know why you fight. And it's not for anything down here. We don't fight for anything down here. But we fight for everything over there. Don't be confused this morning as to why you step into that boxing ring every day and you put on those boxing gloves and you go 12 rounds with the devil. No, it's not easy. No, it's not easy to take on. If you're hanging on by a thread... No, it's not easy to say no to the world. Yes, it can be difficult. But oh, the blessed life that we can live walking with Jesus. There's no better life. I said there's no better life than to be full of the Holy Ghost. Baptized in the name of Jesus. Walking with the Lord. There's no better life. There's no better life. There's no better life. We fight for one reason this morning. Let me clear the air. For one reason only. And I believe that is unequivocally without debate. For the hope that we have. Not in this temporary life. But in that eternal life to come. One of my favorite verses, my wife makes fun of me because I read it all the time. But the Apostle Paul said it best when he said, If in this life only we have hope in Christ. Having hope in Christ is not enough. If that hope is in this life only. That is a profound verse. If in this life, young people, you have hope in Christ, but you've lost sight of the promise of a better place. We are, of all men, most miserable. If you're fighting for the tangibles of Pentecostalism and not the eternals of this book, you're fighting for the wrong thing. Might be a good cause, but it's the wrong thing to fight for. If you step into that ring, but you've lost sight of the hope of glory one day, you're fighting for the wrong thing. If you come to church and you lift up your hands and you say, Wow, look at our church. Wow, look at the musicians. They're so anointed, so talented. I've got a great pastor. Wow, I'm blessed. But in the midst of that, you don't realize that that stuff is all the blessings of God. But that stuff is not why we fight for the truth of this book. All the church stuff that we can measure success by. It's good, but it's not why we toil. It's not why we labor. It's not why we shed tears when no one sees. It's not why a just man gets knocked down seven times and rises back up again. I'm not standing here today for this stuff. I'm not standing here today for my ministry and for my calling. I'm standing here today because God has promised me that if I can cross that finish line, if I can maintain my faith, 
and I've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, and I've been buried with Him in Jesus' name, I've got a promise. You've got a promise. Paul reminds us, and I'm doing my best to remind you as well this morning, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Do we have any runners in here? It takes some effort to run. You might feel like you're fighting the resistance of friction. You're fighting the resistance of drag. The wind that is opposing. You can't just stand there and say, oh, I'm going to make it across that. I have hope. I believe. You can believe all you want, honey, but if you're not fighting, if you're not running, you're going the wrong direction. You're not going to cross the finish line. No matter how much you believe in this thing, you've got to put in some effort. You've got to fight. I believe there are some weights in our lives that we must lay aside. There are some personal dreams, some personal aspirations that may not get us across that finish line, that may not line up with the Word of God. You have to lay it aside. There are some weights and there are some distractions that we must, if we are determined, if we have a made up mind, I'm going to make it to heaven. I'm not going to be lost. I'm not going to lose my soul for anything or anybody. I believe that eternity is on the line this morning for some person. I believe somebody's salvation is on the line this morning. And you have to make up in your mind, I'm going to lay it all aside it's not worth it. It's not worth it for me to not cross that finish line and make it to the other side. And you know it's a whole lot harder to fight with baggage. It's a whole lot harder to run that race with stuff dragging you down. And I can almost guarantee um, if you keep that stuff in your life, um, you'll never cross the finish line. You'll never make it during the 12th round of that boxing match with the devil. Um, if you're weighted down, you got to lay it aside and run this race with patience. Uh, knowing that God is a rewarder uh, of them that diligently seek him. you're worried about getting a bit dirty I don't want to mess my shoes up if you're worried about messing up your hair if you're worried about getting a bit bloody getting knocked out then this life just might not be for you but God is patient this church is patient loving caring you might be fighting for the wrong thing if you're worried about getting a bit messed up, getting a bit bloody. Your hope might just be in the wrong thing. Because let me promise you, our hope in eternity is worth getting a bit bloody over it's worth going 12 rounds with the devil if I have to. It's worth running until I've got no strength left in my body. It's worth getting knocked out and getting back up again because I've got a promise of a mansion on the other side of glory. Young people, are you hearing me this morning? You've got a promise. Don't give up. Eternity is on the line for somebody. If you don't make up in your mind right now, I'm going to fight tooth and, tooth and nail or tooth and toenail. Whatever it is, I'm going to fight. 
I'm not going to give up. Jesus never said it would be easy. He never promised us a mansion down here. He never promised us an easy road down here. He never promised us that this life would be full of blessings with no hardships. This is not a prosperity gospel. Denying yourself. Picking up your cross. And following Christ daily. Asuma. Every day. Asuma. Every day. It's not supposed to be easy. I do believe if you live for God easy, life is going to be hard. But if you live for God hard, life's going to be so much easier. But you might be here this morning and you're a little bit bruised up. Yeah. Have you ever been there? Maybe you're there right now. Drag it into church. Man, I just went 12 rounds with the devil. Woo, he gave me a whooping, but pastor, I'm here. I just got knocked out, but I'm here. I made it. Devil, you're not going to win. Devil, you're not going to win. I'm here. I'm standing. I still got to praise I still got to dance. Come on, you've got something worth fighting for. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let the world lie to you. This is the best life. Your soul is worth fighting for. Your family is worth fighting for. Your son and your daughter that's backslidden. You've been hanging on to that promise, mom and dad. They're worth fighting for. God ain't done with them. If God's not finished them, you can't be finished. If God's still working, you still got to be fighting for them, praying for them, believing that God is going to bring them back. Oh, in the name of Jesus, prodigals are coming home. I said prodigals are coming home. If you believe that, I want you to clap your hands. If you believe that God's bringing them home. I said God's bringing them home. Oh, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I know what it's like to have loved ones that have turned their back on the church. I got a mom. I had a dad. He passed away. Got a brother and a sister. I don't know if they're watching, but I love them. I know God's still working. Listen, we don't always fight for our own selves. Sometimes we're fighting for the people that are beside us. Sometimes they need us to hang on. Sometimes they need us to keep fighting. If they can make it, I can make it. If they can cross the finish line, I can cross the finish line. If they can get back up, I can get back up. So I'm believing. God, you're bringing my mom home. God, you're bringing Daniel home. God, you're bringing Abigail home. They're coming home. They're coming home. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. On April the 6th, 1893, long time ago, two men felt the very same thing. We've got something worth fighting for. 
Andy Bowen and Jack Burke. They fought the longest glove boxing match in history at the Olympic Club in New Orleans, Louisiana. Has anybody been to Louisiana? Amen. God bless you. The bout lasted for seven hours and 19 minutes. From 9 p.m. until early morning the next day, going 110 rounds. Do we have any boxers in here? Amen. 110 rounds. The prize was the lightweight championship of the South, and it was a prize of $2,500. And in 1893, that's a lot of money. Burke was the favorite in the beginning, winning the first 25 rounds. But Iron Bowen refused to be knocked out. Whew. He knocked Burke down in the 25th round, but the bell rang before Burke could be counted out. And at some point during the match, both of Burke's hands were broken, and the two opponents grew so tired that their boxing talents made no difference. Most of the crowd had left by midnight. And the many who hadn't left, they were asleep in their chairs. You may not have an audience walking with Jesus. Are you fighting because of who's watching? Are you worshiping because of who's watching? Are you faithful because they're keeping attendance? Do you give because they record? Or are you doing it for one purpose and one purpose only? It's not for anything down here. It's not for anybody down here. It's for everything that's been promised over there. Praise God. Amen. By the 108th round, no punches were being thrown. The men just circled each other over and over. They were basically dancing with one another. By the 110th round, the referee, John Duffy, called the match a draw and suggested the two men could split the purse. I'm not sure if we could classify that as a good fight or not. But we can't deny that each one of these men, they had something in them that made them good right down to the last drop. There was a drive within them. There was a perseverance that would not allow them to quit even in the end when they had no strength left. When their talents and their abilities meant nothing, they would not give in. They would not quit. The white flag would not be raised. I believe this morning something needs to rise within this body of believers that says... Uh, I see the value um, in this book. Um, I see the value um, in walking with Jesus. Um, something needs to rise within us um, and say, regardless um, of who's watching me, um, I am still going to fight uh, for the eternity of my soul. In the name of Jesus. Does it matter who's spectating? It doesn't matter your talents or your abilities. It doesn't matter how much energy you have left. And God help you if you're hanging on by a thread. If both of your hands are broken. I believe you're going to put up a good fight. I believe you're going to fight. Because I believe you see the eternal value in fighting for the security of your soul. I refuse to stay down. I'm determined this morning to put up a good fight. Child of God, your soul depends on your stubbornness. Your soul depends on your tenacity to fight for what God has done and is doing in your life. No, you can't save yourself. That's not what I'm saying. But you can keep yourself saved with a made-up mind this morning. 
You can maintain the righteousness of God at work in your life by deciding to fight the good fight until you've crossed that finish line. I'm not going to be much longer if the musicians want to prepare to come. I believe God's about to do something really special in this place. I believe there are some men, some women, some moms, some dads, some husbands, some wives that have been hanging on by a thread. And you don't know if it's worth going on. You don't know if it's worth fighting for. No, this isn't worth fighting for. It's okay, Pastor. This building, it's not worth fighting for. Your ministry, your calling, it's not worth fighting for. No, a good Sunday service, ah, it's not worth fighting for. If you've lost sight of the purpose of all this. <laughs> if in this life we have hope in Christ. We are men most miserable. So if you have hope in all this stuff, your talents, your abilities, praise God for it. The blessings of the Lord. Praise God for this amazing church building. Praise God for your talents and your abilities and your calling, your giftings. Praise God for the church age. But all of that will end when that trumpet sounds. I have fought a good fight. I'm here. Doesn't matter how you look. Doesn't matter if you just were knocked down Saturday night. Oh, I failed God. The devil whooped me last night, but I see I'm going to get up because I know there's grace waiting on me. I know there's mercy waiting on me. I know there's love. I'm going to get up. I don't feel like going to church. But I'm not going to church for the stuff there. I'm going to church because God has promised me. Let's stand this morning if we could. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You see all the heroes in Hebrews 11 and 12. The Bible says that they received not the promise. They hid in the caves of the earth. They ran for their lives. Many of them were martyrs for the namesake of Christ. Boiled alive, sawed in asunder. That's what it says. But they did not receive the promise, but they received a good report. They weren't heroes of the faith because of what they obtained down here. They were known as heroes of the faith because what they maintained right here. It doesn't matter. How you look on the outside if the devil's beating you up, if he's wearing you down, if you've got the blessings of God or no blessings of God, it doesn't matter. Do you have the Holy Ghost on the inside? Have you been buried in the name of Jesus? Are you maintaining your faith in God? have a choice this morning lay aside every weight and run <laughs> get in that ring because you got something worth fighting for he can come
come back before this service ends, Pastor Harvey. <laughs> Are you ready? Eternity's on the line. Salvation's on the line. Your pastor believes in you. I believe in you. God believes in you. Regardless if God ever heals you, don't stop fighting. Don't get bitter. Don't get upset at God. He don't owe you nothing. <laughs> he don't owe us nothing. He don't work for us, we work for Him. We are His servants. Regardless if your family leaves you, you're not fighting for them. You're fighting for. But your fight for that can save them, can help them, can be an encouragement to them, can give them hope. Amen. I have more to say, but I'm done. I believe God's ready to do something this morning. to come down to this altar this morning if we could. I want everybody to come down. I think this is appropriate. If you're a church member, if you're a visitor, I want you to make your way down to this altar. I know the music team, they've got a song that's prepared. But I want us all to come down together. Because guess what? Somebody needs you to come down. Somebody's going to say, oh, that person's going down. I know what they're going through. They're going through all. They just lost but they're, they're, cut, they're still standing. They can do it. I can do it. Oh, God. If you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, God can fill you right now. I said God can fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost right now. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, don't leave this service until you made that decision to be buried with Him in baptism. If you've been walking with the Lord for many years, but you have found yourself finding hope in the things of this life more than the hope of the promise of what's to come, this moment's for you. Can lift our hands uh, every eye closed every hand lifted over in this house uh, come on let's cry out to God right now I don't know what you're going through I don't know your situation I don't know what battle you're in I don't know what struggles you're going through I don't know what you've lost in this life but I'm here to tell you God has something better for you. Come on, make a conscious decision. Devil, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to quit. Devil, you can't have my family. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Come on, we're not just going through the motions of I believe the Spirit of God is working. The Spirit of God is moving. Come on, that's it. Wrestle. Come on, that's it. Wrestle in the Spirit. Come on, that's it. Wrestle in the Spirit.